Let's look into the Word of God this afternoon. If you have your Bibles or your apps on your devices, I invite your attention to my favorite book of the Bible, the book of Psalms, book of Psalms. And today I want to invite your attention to Psalm 46, familiar passage of Scripture to most Bible readers, Psalm 46. And as we move toward Psalm 46, I want to call your attention to verse 10, Psalm 46 and verse 10. And when you find Psalm 46, verse 10, the King James Version is the version I want to read from this afternoon. And that King James Version translates that Hebrew like this. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted among the nation, among the nation, in all the earth, in all the earth. That's enough for this afternoon. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. These moments that we spend together on this Sunday afternoon, I want to talk simply from the subject when it's out of your hands. When it's out of your hands. Have you ever been at the point in life where you didn't know what to do because there was absolutely nothing you could do? Have you ever found your, yourself at the point of helplessness? Wondering how in the world you were going to handle some circumstance, some situation. Realizing that you did not have the power, the authority, the ability to handle it in your own strength. And brothers and sisters across this sanctuary this Sunday afternoon, even many more watching us via the World Wide Web who can testify that life will present a set of circumstances for which you are absolutely impotent to do anything about them. You have no authority, no ability, no power to facilitate some change in the circumstance with which you're dealing. I speak today from experience at this point. For the last few weeks of my life have found me at a place where I could not do anything about the circumstance of my own life or my child's life. I was at the point where helplessness had grasped me and as a consequence, I couldn't do anything about a 12 year old, now 13 year old boy who was writhing in pain, pain from which he could get no relief at all. And day I've come to this preaching moment dealing with this set of circumstances and remembering that whenever I come to a situation like that, my default is to turn to the book of Psalms. I know that you have your own favorite book of the Bible, but I love the book of Psalms because when you come to the book of Psalms, it gives to you a picture or several portraits of individuals who found themselves in circumstances that were beyond their control and they were able to to call on a God for whom nothing was impossible and in their moments of strain and suffering God showed up and showed to them that he was able to work things together for their good. I bring our attention to the book of Psalms today because when you read the book of Psalms you'll find out that all human emotions are held, are given to us in those Psalms from Psalm 1 all the way to Psalm 150. When you read the Psalms you'll find out that no matter what state of mind you find yourself in you can find yourself in the Psalms if you're on the mountaintop there's a psalm for you if you're going through some situation which causes you to walk through the valley there's a psalm for you if everything is going well in your world there's a psalm for you if you catching it coming and going there's a psalm for you if you're excited about the loved ones that you find yourself surrounded by there's a psalm for you if you mad at everything that crosses your path there's a psalm for you I love the psalms because it gives to us a beautiful portrait of every human emotion that we will ever encounter and I found myself 
myself dealing with some emotions that Psalm 46 helped me to handle. Couldn't you take a little time with me in Psalm 46 this afternoon? Because it seems to me that Psalm 46 can help those of us who are in the community of faith to understand that God is still in complete control. Watch this. Even when we are completely out of control. That if God's hands are still as big and as strong as they are, it does not matter that circumstances are out of your hands. If you can find a way to put it in God's hands, he is still able to give you victory over your adversity. Psalm 46 blesses me, Dr. Joshua L. Mitchell. It is a communal song of confidence and trust in God. The community of faith are lifting their voices, letting everybody around them know that they trust in, have confidence in this God of theirs. Watch how the psalm opens. You'll find out it's a communal song of trust. Here it is. Oh, oh God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Okay, you should have gotten excited about that. Let me rewind, press play. I said that the community comes together and when the community begins to sing about, talk about, shout about their God, this is what they say. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Third time is the charm because your pew partner is still sitting there looking at me like, huh? Okay, here it is. The Bible helps us to understand that the community has reason to rejoice everybody on your pew has a reason to shout hallelujah everybody listening to me right now can rejoice because God is our refuge and strength and he's a very present help in trouble now Pastor AJ I got that I understand that I agree with it I shout on it every time I hear it but I'll be honest with you as I was reading through Psalm 46 this past weekend I will be honest with you and testify that although I agree with every word of verse one by the time I got to verse two there was a shift in my attitude because verse two says therefore will not we fear mm. now you may not understand why there was a shift in my attitude until I tell you about my last several weeks because my last several weeks did not give to me some placid nice calm serene situation in life no the last couple weeks of my life were scary I don't know if you've ever had some scary situation to show up in your life but I heard some scary scary stuff I saw some scary stuff my boy was experiencing some scary stuff his siblings were watching him go through some scary stuff we are all sitting here listening the doctors tell us we don't know what's wrong with the boy and we don't know how long he's going to be in this hospital that's some scary stuff now I know you're much more spiritual than I am you never get scared about anything you so spiritual you walk around with a bible under your arm all the time you got a halo around your head but I ain't as spiritual as you are and some stuff in life will scare the life out of you that's where I found myself over these past few weeks I found myself in a space that was intimidating in a space that backed me up against the wall yep the preacher was intimidated by the situation yep the pastor was intimidated by the situation yep cause a parent was looking at his son and wondered whether or not this boy was gonna be alright can I find 10 people in here who say listen I know the bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear but every now and then I got it from some somewhere okay okay here it is it's a scary scene it's a scary situation it's a and while I'm dealing with that scary scene and situation Psalm 46 pops up and I say here it is in Psalm 46 verse 2 therefore will not we fear I got a little problem with that I keep on reading though because I never going to give up on the text and as I keep reading I find out that the psalmist uses 11 verses and the psalmist speaks in 10 of those 11 verses 10 of those 11 verses the psalmist is speaking about God he makes war 
wars to cease. He does great and mighty things. He's with us. He speaks all that about God. But then in verse 10, <laughs> that's when I got happy all over again. Because in verse 10, God said... <coughs> Let me clear my throat. I appreciate you speaking for me, but I can speak for myself. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, is there anybody in church this afternoon who is grateful that every now and then God will open up his own mouth and begin to speak to you in ways that you need him to hear, in ways that you need to hear from him? Somebody can testify. God knows just what to say at just the right time, in just the right season, so that I can get over the hump I'm dealing with and know that everything's going to be all right. And the Bible says... God said, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still. You stressing. You tripping. You fretting. And I want you to be still and know that I am God. Now, child of God, I bring this for your consideration today because I got a funny feeling. And a sneaking suspicion that I'm not the only one who stands at some crossroads in life. And you're trying to make some decisions whether or not you're going to move forward or be paralyzed by the circumstance with which you're dealing. And there's somebody who's dealing with some scary situation out in front of you. Yours may not be like mine, but all of us got some stuff we got to deal with in the month of March. Everybody in here. Got, okay, and if you don't know what you got to deal with, just keep living. Because something going to show up in this life that will scare you, rock you to your core and God says be still and know that I am God let me break it down like a fraction and I'll be out of your way in just a few minutes because it seems to me that the text suggests to us brothers and sisters that when you're in that season of life that is frustrating you harrowing your life circumstance and you don't know what to do God says to us first of all watch this relax yeah, I know you didn't find it spiritual either. And most of the saints said all day long didn't find it spiritual. They like copy, that's all you got. You've been gone for a month and you come back and you say, relax. Yep, that's my word for everybody in here. Because the truth of the matter is, there's some folk listening to me right now who get stressed out over a hangnail. There's some folk in here today who can testify if you get one hint of bad news, if you get the rumor of bad news, it stresses you out. And God says, listen, I want you to know that if you claim to be the child of God that you claim to be, and you know me as the God of your salvation that you know me to be, I need you to be be yourself still. Relax. In the midst of, I love that word. That word in the Hebrew, Pastor Johnson, is rafa. That word rafa is a unique word. It literally means to be idle or lazy. One connotation means to be disheartened or discouraged. One connotation means to be weak and weary. But the connotation of, of, of Psalm 46 verse 10, the connotation here is none of those. It literally means to withdraw. To take your hands off, to drop your weapons, and know that God is in control. <laughs> I thank God for those of you who caught it, but for those of you who need to catch up, watch this. It literally means to withdraw, take your hands off, drop your weapons. And realize that God is in charge. Now, now I like this, brothers and sisters, because you will remember that in the verses that precede verse 10, you know, the psalmist is talking about how God causes wars to cease. Because apparently there has been some entanglement in the life of the community of faith. And they've been dealing with some enemy, some battle with which they had to deal. And the Bible helps us to understand that when God speaks, he says, I don't want you stressing about what's going on around you if you know that the God you serve is handling stuff for you uh, withdraw take your hands off drop your weapons and believe re realize that God is in control 
Now this is important because there's some of us in the room today who know that before we withdraw from anything, we'll fight about it until death do us part. There's somebody in here today who knows you are a fighter and you know how to fight. You got your weapons drawn at all times. There's some folk in here who are from the hood or have hood-like mentalities and you know good and well that you have never run away from a good fight. But God says there's some fights you can't handle by yourself. There's some fights you don't need to get embroiled in. I'm trying to help you. God says withdraw. Take your hands off. Drop your weapons and recognize, realize that I am in complete control. Now church, this, this troubles me. It troubles me because by nature, I'm a fixer. I like to fix stuff. If it's broke, I want to fix it. I don't need it to be broke long. I want to reconcile. I want to make sure that everything's are by nature. I like to make sure that stuff that's been out of order has come back into order. But God says, listen, you can't handle this. Because in your own authority, in your own ability, you are too weak, too fragile to handle this situation. That's why you got me. You caught it. He caught it. She got it. Or oh, now it's rolling around the room. All right. He said, that's why you got me. And the good news is, since you got me, you need to know I got you. And I got this situation you going through. Is there anybody in this church house this afternoon who is grateful that any way, any time you're going through, whatever you're going through, the good news is that God's got you. God's got the situation. He knows what you're going through. So you can withdraw, take your hands off, drop your weapons because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. No need of you cussing your co-workers out like they're cussing you out. Ain't no need of you treating them folk like they're trying to treat you. Ain't no need of you acting ugly just because the whole world is acting ugly. It's no need for you to be dis in in civil like the worst of the world is dealing with incivility. It's time for those of us who believe that God is God to watch God work and believe that if we be still, he'll fight our can I find somebody who's watched him fight a battle or three or 12 or 15 for you? Is there anybody who's seen him work in ways that you never could have worked it out for yourself? I need you to encourage your pew partner and say he still fights battles for his children. That's why he says even if the worst should come, you can still trust your God. Verse 2, when you read it, he says, even if the mountains be thrown in the midst of the sea, or the waters roar and be troubled, oh, though the mountains shake and they swell with the shaking thereof. He says, don't trip, because God is in the midst of her. And God is right there in the midst of it all. And he says, be still. Be still. Relax. Stop stressing over everything you go through. You cannot be the child of God that you claim to be and stress over everything you go through. Oh, I'll give you a few minutes to recover from the initial shock of it, but you can't stay stuck in depression and frustration your whole life and say, I believe God. I said, you, I'll give you a few days or maybe a couple weeks to get over the initial shock of it. But you can't stay stuck in the doldrums of devastation and still claim you believe God. I need 10 people in here who know. I don't know how he's going to work it out. But if he tells me to be still, at some point in time, he's going to show up and prove he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask for. Be still. Relax, man. Relax, sis. Come on down off that ledge. Get yourself together. Compose yourself. All right. Relax. And then remember. Yeah. Watch the text. Watch the text. I'm still in verse 10. You still there? Be still. Here it is. Next phrase. And know that I am God. 
Oh, he says, I want you to know that I am God. I say that you and I, at some season, in some seasons of our lives, are going to have to just learn how to remember that God is God. Okay, that didn't work too well. There's about three people right in here. Who's who? Okay, let me, I'm going to try y'all. I said at some point in life, you and I are just going to have to re remember that no matter what we're going through, God, where's Hank Neal when you need him, is still God. Yeah. Yeah. God, okay. Yeah. At some point in life, you and I just have to be rest, rest assured and believe and then remember that our God is still God. He said, I want you to know that I am God. And when you know that, it affects how you live. See, what you know affects how you interact with people. What you know affects how you see the situation of your life. And if you remember the stuff you already know, and if you know that God is God, it shifts your perspective to let you know that the enemy will not get the last word. I need to find my warriors now. I need my warriors to help me. I need the warriors to help somebody on your pew and remind them that the enemy does not get the last word. The enemy thought he got the last word at Calvary, but on the third day, he rose with all So I want you to remember, and, and, and the psalmist has been talking about God the whole song. As a matter of fact, he started off in verse 1. He said, you want to know who God is? He's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my very present help in trouble. Give it to them again, Cosby. They need to hear it more and more again. I said, he's your refuge. He's your strength. He's your very present help in trouble. Cosby, the third time is the charm. They need to hear it. Somebody still acting like they didn't hear what you said. He's your refuge. He's your strength. He's your very present help in trouble. Do you know what a refuge is? It's that stalwart fortress in which you can run and can't nothing get to you. You can hide in there and be safe and secure from all alarm. Is there anybody in here who knows that your God has safeguarded you from some stuff you didn't even know was coming at you? Your God has safeguarded you from some stuff that should have caught you long time ago. Is there anybody in this building today who is grateful that he's been my refuge? He's been my hiding place. He's been my shield. And he's been my strength. Oh, this is for those who've gotten weak along the journey. This one is for those of us who thought for sure we were going to throw in the towel. But just as soon as we got ready to throw it in, God kicked in gear and let us know, oh man, I got you. Come on, child, you ain't in this by yourself. I know you thought you were going to go down, but I refuse to let a child of God go down because you are more than a conqueror through him who loves you. He's my strength. He gives me strength when I'm weak. Come on, Apostle Paul, help me right through here. The Apostle Paul says, when, in my, when I'm weak, then he's my strength. He says, my strength, is, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. You never know how strong your God is till you realize how weak you can get. Did you hear me up there? I said, you never know how strong your God is until you realize how weak life can make you. And when he steps in and gives you strength like no other, you ought to recognize that's who your God is. And he says, I want you to remember that. But not just that he's your refuge, he's your strength. He's a very present help in trouble. Yeah. He's an ever present help in the time of trouble. I love this because he literally says that whenever you're in trouble God is already present okay. okay no 
whenever you get in trouble, God is already in the midst of that trouble with you. When you get in trouble, you ain't got to go searching for God and hunting for God. God is already in the midst of that situation with you. Come on, where are the three Hebrew boys when you need them? Didn't we throw in three? Looks like I see four. And the fourth one looks like the Son of God. Is there anybody in here who testifies he'll get in the fire with you? That's why, that's why, that's why in verses 7 and 11, the psalmist says, the Lord of hosts is with us. When the God of Jacob is our refuge. Hear me, hear me. The Lord of hosts is with us. I like that phrase. That, that Hebrew phrase literally means the big God. The warrior God. The battle fighting God. The God who tell you, sit back, I got this one. The God who will go into the job before you get there and start clearing some stuff out and moving some stuff away. The God who prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemy. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now watch the word. When you get the King James Version, if you have it on your phone, and you get the King James Version of this text, you'll find out that after verses 7 and 11, here comes the same word. Same word is given at the end of verses 7 and 11. It's the word Selah. Those of us who've been in church, you went to, you, you passed Sunday school and you passed BTU and you went to vacation Bible school. You may have heard that Selah is a musical term. Musical term. It literally means to rest. It means you just heard something so good that you can't rush past that. It means that the psalmist just said something so amazing that you need to take your time and let that wash over your soul. That glory. He says the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Rest. Sit back. Don't rush past this. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Listen to this. Let this move around in your mind. Let this rush over your spirit because I want you to remember this when you start catching hell again. See, all of us can be real spiritual in the sanctuary. While we sitting around shouting folk, we sitting around clapping folk, we can shout and clap. While we sitting around folk who are rejoicing, we can rejoice. But there's some moments where God's going to make you live what you say you believe. Oh, come here, come here. For the last month and a half, God's been making me find out if I believe what I preach. Son, do you really believe that he's a healer? Do you really believe he's a way maker? Do you really believe that there's nothing too hard for your God? There's some seasons where God makes you trust him even when you can't trace him. You got to remember. That he is who he, is, who he says he is. You got to remember that he can do what he says he can do. He says, I want you to relax. I want you to remember. And at the end of the day, you better recognize. I'm done. I'm done. Real simple message today. I, I want you to recognize. Uh, uh, watch this. Watch how the verse ends. Verse 10. You still there? Verse 10 says, um, uh, I will be exalted. Among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. Um, if you have the New International Version, it says, I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. I like nations. That means all the, even the polytheistic nations, everybody around is going, but I like heathen because heathen means those who don't believe. That I can do what I say I can do and I am who I say I am. He says, I'm going to be exalted even among them. Now, now this, I like this because God, God is showing out now. God is saying, listen here, don't you fool yourself. I don't care how big and bad the enemies of your life may be. I still get the last word. Yeah. God says when the dust settles and the smoke clears, I'm still going to have folk wondering who in the world is your God. And they're going to want to know your God and get to know your God because I will be exalted 
among the heathen. Now, that's the folk who don't even know me, who don't even like me, who don't even come to church, who don't even worship. They're going to look at you and they're going to wonder who your God is. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. I just saw it a couple of weeks ago. Dr. Ned Howard, I just saw it a couple of weeks ago. It was a wonderful thing. While I was in my boy's hospital room, we were waiting on, on surgery number three. We were waiting on surgery number three, and, and the ENT, the ear doctor who was supposed to work on it, had told us the day before that she specializes in handling the ear. My boy's had a significant ear infection that died, has permeated much of his head, and he has been very consumed with this, and has caused him so much pain over these past weeks. It's a just literally ear infection that has exploded in his brain. And now in his head, and now he's dealing with this reality. And this woman comes in and she says, Don't worry about it, I can handle this surgery. They call me the ear girl. I said, all right, ear girl, because my boy got an ear problem. And I need the ear girl to handle my boy's ear problem. And she said, no problem, I can handle it. The next day she comes and they put him on what is known as the add-on list. The add-on list is when you are not already scheduled for surgery. We weren't scheduled weeks out. It is just something we know we need you to have. And so we're going to put you on the add-on list. And you'll be brought into the operating room as soon as we can get you a space. Well, brothers and sisters, the day had come. We're ready for the surgery. Morning passes. Nobody calls for my son. Gets the afternoon, nobody calls for my son. It's the middle of the afternoon, nobody calls for my son. Around 5 o'clock, the ear girl comes in. And Doc says, I hate to let you know, I got to leave. My shift is over. And I got, what? That's what I said. And I said, my shift is over. And I cannot stay any longer. I got to get out of here. I've been here all day long, and I'm going home. She said, my shift is over. I got to leave. I said, all right. So she walked out the room. I picked up my phone. I started texting some folk that I know. A brother that I know who's a member of this church. Big baller shot call at the hospital. I'm glad I know people. I said, ear girl said she can't do the, the, the surgery because it's time for her to go. Five minutes later, ear girl walked back into the room. Wait, wait. Watch what Ear Girl said. Ear Girl said, I don't know who you praying to, but an operating room just opened and I'm going to take your boy down in just a few minutes. That's not the best part of the story. The best part of the story was Miss Cosby said, well, sit down. If you got five minutes, I'll tell you who my God is so you can get happy about him too. this church this afternoon who knows that God will put you in position where you can show your God off you can talk about how wonderful he is talk about how amazing he is talk about how awesome he is I need 10 people in here to exalt him among the heathen oh, I feel like lifting him up Come on, Tonto, let's ride. I feel like hollering one good time and I'll be out of here. He says, I will be exalted among the heathen. But he also says, I'll be exalted in the earth. The connotation here, Rem Stephan, is that he's not just going to be exalted among folk who don't know him. He's going to be exalted among folk who do know him. It literally connotes that everybody who's got a relationship with him, watch this, is going to have a reason to celebrate God in public. And I need some folk in here who refuse to be a part of the Secret Service Saints to help me right through here. I need some people in here who refuse to be covert ops Christians to help me give God some glory on a Sunday afternoon because he's going to be exalted among his people in this world. I saw it happen. I saw it happen. One last story. I'm out of your way. I saw it happen right there in my boy's room. My boy was in, in almost a fetal position for about 8, 10, 12 days. Had such severe pain. Wouldn't open his eyes because the white light was bothering him. Pain all in his head. And uh, he was just laying there. Somewhere teetering between affliction and depression. Day after day. He didn't want to do much talking. You, if you know Matthew, you know he's always the star of the show. 
He wants to make sure that you understand that he is in the room. This boy was laying in his bed, not wanting to talk, not wanting to do anything. Tubes coming all out of his body. He's laying there, and while he's laying there, everybody's looking at him, bemoaning his situation. Because this 12-year-old boy shouldn't have to deal with this kind of pain. And then Wednesday of last week, big brother, Wednesday of last week, we walk into the room. Matthew's up out the bed. And he's walking around. Eyes open talking to us although his voice is muted because his sickness has taken away the volume in his voice he's talking to us and we're having a good time in conversation we go up to the kids zone in the hospital he gets some paint and he now he becomes the next Picasso of the world bro man didn't have any artistic ability before we went in the hospital he been painting stuff for the last three days he gave me a picture of the Lion King setting and I looked back at him and I said Hakuna Matata my brother Where my, where, my, where my Lion King fans? It's a problem-free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Means no worries. Means no worries. He painted this beautiful picture of, uh, of, uh, of, of the Lion King. He's painting all these paintings. It's a wonderful thing. And doctors are looking at him and saying, Hey, make my, uh, my you, how in the world are you feeling? He said, I'm feeling all right. And looking at him and they're amazed at this boy who's now walking around. When for the last several days, he's just been laying there in the bed. I said, Matt, you got to give God praise. Because God knows how to do wonderful things suddenly. Oh, my. I said, he does wonderful things suddenly. Now, that shouted me, but it didn't shout him. Matt, you look back at me. He said, that may be true, but some things God does eventually I'm done I'm about to t- <laughs> I'm heading to the table but I need somebody in this church who understands that my praise is not predicated on when he does it my praise is determined by who is the one who is doing it and whether he does it suddenly or eventually I'm going to praise him continually And is there anybody in this building this afternoon who can help me close this message and begin to celebrate the God who still works miracles? I can't tell you when he's going to fix your situation. I can't tell you when he's going to work your circumstance out. But whether he does it suddenly or eventually, he's still worthy to be praised. So I need somebody on a Sunday afternoon to help me lift up Jesus. I need somebody to help me glorify God. And stretch out your arms, open up your mouth, and say, Anyway, you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Is there a witness in this church that God can do it however He chooses to do it? I don't know when He's gonna work it out, I don't know how He's gonna work it out, but since I know He's able to work it out, He may not come when I want Him, but He'll all be right on time. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Somebody shout it! Yeah. Shout it! Yeah.
know who I was sent to encourage this afternoon. But I need you to know that your God has capable hands. And his word to you and to me is, be still. And know that I am God. And I will be exalted. I will be exalted. I will show you my power. I will get the glory. There will be glory after this. There will be victory after this. Come on, is there anybody who believes it? God's going to turn it around. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He will bring you out.
us this afternoon who says, Preacher, I need to be in relationship with the God who will be exalted among the earth. If you hear this Sunday afternoon, you say, Pastor, I need a relationship with the God about whom you've been preaching. Who will calm me down and tell me to be still and know that he is in charge. If that's you, my sister, if that's you, my brother, I want you to walk toward me right now. Come down to this altar. Let me introduce you to a great God and a loving Savior who is here for you even at this very moment to whom we give all the glory. If you hear this Sunday afternoon and you say, Pastor, I need a church home. I need to grow up.